Let's get into our fifth section of unit zero for AP Biology. In this section, we're going to go over something called standard deviation, which deals a lot with what we talked about in the last section, which is variation. And to start out this section, I always like to show this graph. This graph shows data on human height for both men and women. On the bottom here, you can see the height in inches, and on the side here, you can see the frequency of the population. Now, at first, this graph might be misleading because it kind of looks like women here are taller than men. But remember, on the side here, the y-axis, this is the frequency, not the height. The height is down here in the x-axis. This shows us that males are taller on average than females. What we typically see is there is variation within the men. You can see this variation in red, and the average male is around 70, 71 inches tall. However, there's less variation within females, and they have a shorter average height, which is around 65 inches. So what we're looking at in these two different data samples is variation within and variation between the two different groups. And that's important because we're going to look at something called the bell curve or something called standard deviation. This specifically deals with something called normal distribution. This is the probability distribution where the values of a random variable are distributed symmetrically or otherwise known as the bell curve. These graphs typically look like a bell. Basically what we're looking at here is how do data sample sets vary within their data? And that's specifically what standard deviation measures. It's the measure of how the data sets vary or deviates from the mean. Data sample sets can have less variation or more variation. What we typically see is the mean be in the middle, which is the average. And within each of these data sets is going to be variation. You can see there is less variation within this data set and more variation within this data set. Now, typically within this bell curve, we have something called the standard deviations. And standard deviations just tell us how much data is within that group. For example, we have our mean or our average here in the middle. What we typically see is 68% of variation is going to fall between negative one standard deviation and positive one standard de deviation. That means if we take a data set from some variable, whatever the variable is, 68% of the data should fall between these two standard deviations. For that same data set, if we look at two standard deviations, 95% of the data should fall between those two points. So again, if we subtract one standard deviation and we add one standard deviation, 95% of the data should fall between these two points. Now at this point, you might be wondering, how do we know how much each percent falls within each standard deviation. And that kind of math is way above my head and way above the material for an AP biology class, but this is just backed with data and math and science. But I encourage you, if you're interested, look this up and do a little more research. Now again, we can go one step further. We can look at three standard deviations and within three standard deviations of the mean, there's going to be 99% of the data. So just as again, as a wrap up, we have our average or the mean, we have our first standard deviation that encapsulates 68% of the data, our second standard deviation, which encapsulates 95% of the data, and our third standard deviation, which encloses 99% of all the data. Now, how do we figure out what these standard deviation points are? All right, like I warned you, there is some math involved here. This is the equation for standard deviation, but don't freak out yet. It's really not that bad. I'm going to show you the steps of how to work through one of these standard deviation problems. I'm going to go through an example problem, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut of how to figure this out a lot easier. Before we get into how to work through one of these problems, let's go over each of these variables. This X with a line above it is called X bar, or it's the mean or average for the data. Each X here represents a data point. This big E, as I like to call it, this is the summation sign. This is just adding up all the values within these parentheses. And N is the number of data points for a data set. Here is a list of the steps of how to work through a standard deviation problem. First, you find the mean of the data set, which is X bar. You then find the difference of how each data point differs from the mean. So you take the data point and subtract the mean. You square that difference and you find the sum of all of these differences for each one of the data points. You then take that sum and divide it by the number of data points minus one. That whole number, you take the square root of it and that is your standard deviation. Now again, there was a lot that I breezed through there. Let's go over a practice problem because it makes a lot more sense when you actually give data points. All right, so here's our data points. One, two, three, four, five. 
And if we calculate the average or the mean, we find that the average is three while the number of data points is five. Now what we have to do is we have to take each data point, which is X, and subtract the mean from it. So for the first data point, you can see it's one minus three, which is negative two. Negative two squared is four. For the second data point, it's two minus three, which is negative one. Negative one squared is one. Our third data point is three. Three minus three is zero. Zero squared is zero. Our fourth data point is four. Four minus three is one. One squared is one. And our fifth data point is five. Five minus three is two. Two squared is four. So what we have to do now is take the sum of all of these numbers, which is 10. So again, we have our data points. We have the number of data points, which is five. We have the average, which is three. The sum of all of the variation is 10. So we plug it in here up top. So it, the standard deviation is the square root of 10 divided by n minus one, or the number of data points minus one. So standard deviation is going to be the square root of 10. Five would be the number of data points, so five minus one is four. So it's going to be standard deviation is the square root of 10 divided by four. So standard deviation is the square root of 2.5 because 10 divided by four is 2.5. So standard deviation is 1.58. So what do we do with this standard deviation, which is 1.58? What does that actually mean? Once you've calculated standard deviation, what you're gonna do is you're gonna place the average in the middle of this bell curve. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna add and subtract that standard deviation to figure out where those points are on this graph. So again, in our bell curve, we have the average, which is in the middle, which is three. Remember our standard deviation is 1.58. So we add 1.58 and we subtract 1.58 from the average. So 68% of our data should fall between 1.42 and 4.58. Now we do the same thing for two standard deviations. We add another 1.58 and we subtract another 1.58. So for this data set, 95% of the data should fall between negative 0.16 and 6.16. And typically we stop here at two standard deviations for AP biology, but you could go on to three standard deviations. You would just add and subtract another 1.58. After I show students how to calculate standard deviation through the math problem, I'd like to show them you can do this easily on Google Sheets. So as you can see in my Google spreadsheet, I place the data here without any units, just the numbers. Below here I place equals STDEV, which stands for standard deviation. I select my data and put it within the parentheses. And I click enter and Google Sheets will spit out the answer for me, which is 1.58. For my class, I have my students go through one or two of these practice problems just as practice to understand the method behind calculating standard deviation. However, as we go through the class, I really don't care and I encourage them to use these programs to calculate standard deviation a little bit quicker. Because in my mind, I think the students should know there is math behind these types of concepts within statistics and AP biology. But as, as long as they know that concept, they don't have to calculate that standard deviation every single time. There are programs, there are online resources, there are websites that do this for you. As long as you can, as you can kind of describe the concept, that's all I'm really worried about. And it's really important to remember that not having a standard deviation is just mean. Get it? Because you use the average of mean. Okay, bad joke. I know. I'm sorry.